Today we're going to look at graphing data. The first graphing technique we're going to look at is called a dot plot. It can be used to display data where each dot represents one point, one data point. Another um, definition we need is an outlier. An outlier is a value that's notably, noticeably distinct, so it's separated from the main cluster of data. It's outlying at the area, I guess, um, is a way you can think about it. About it. Outlying, out, lying out at the outside of, of the regular data set of where the most of the data is actually happening. So for our example here, we've got a dot plot and a title is Pets at Home Survey. So this is showing the number of pets that um, each student, each person surveyed has at home. So uh, the number of pets is along this axis here and the number of children that said that they had that number of pets is on this axis here. So if we have a look at zero pets, one, two, three, four, five, five dots there, so five children said they had zero pets. Got a few little questions here to ask about our um, graph here. How many children have two pets? So if we have a look to the number of pets, two here, we can see these are the number of data points that we have. So four children surveyed said that they had uh, two pets. So the answer to this first question is four, four children. Part B says how many children were surveyed. So in order to see how many children were surveyed in total, we need to count up all of the dots that we have. So we've got five dots here, plus 10 dots is 15, plus four dots is 19, uh, plus another two dots is 21, and one last dot out here, 22. So 22 children were surveyed. We're also asked to find the range, median, and mode of the data. So the range is going to be the lowest and the difference between the lowest and highest values. So our highest value is seven, and our lowest value is zero. So uh, seven was the highest number of pets, minus zero, so the range is seven. We also need to find the median. The median's the middle value. So if we have a look here at our data set, we know that there are 22 values. So the middle of the data set is going to be the in between the um, 11th and 12th data points. So here we've got um, 15, so our median's going to sit right here in, at one. So our median number of pets is one. The mode is the most common, and we can see here that the absolute most common here, the one that was uh, answered the most here was one pet. So one pet is the, is the um, mode number of pets. We're also asked, are there any outliers? We can see that the main data set is here but there is one data point all the way out here. So this data point of seven pets is an outlier. A column graph is another way that we can use to show data. It's another um, display that we can show data. Um, any graph, whether it's a, a, a dot plot <clears throat> or, a, or, a, or a column graph, needs to have a title describing what the graph shows. So this title here is the heights of students. It needs to have a label on each axis. The label for this axis here is height in centimetres. We've got the units there that we're measuring height in. And we've got here that the axis on this label here is student name. So this is showing the student names. We need an even scale for any numerical axis. So here we've got a numerical axis. It shows numbers, different numbers changing. So here we can see that it's an even scale. So for each different space, they're evenly spaced as they go up and each space is 20, worth 20 centimetres. So we've got a nice, even scale as we move up and up and up that numerical axis. We also need category labels for any non-numerical axis. So each of the labels that we have for each bar is called the category label. So our category label here is Tim, Philip, Jessica, Donna, Nairi. Each of these is a different category label that categorises what this bar is showing, what each bar is showing for a non-numerical axis. The last different data display that we're going to look at is called a stem and leaf plot. So a stem and leaf plot can be used to display numerical data. The last graph that we looked at showed categorical data, so data that's in different categories. But um, a stem and leaf plot's used to show numerical data, so any data that's just values, like the first graph that we saw that was the number of pets that each child, each child had, we could display that in a stem and leaf plot as well. 
Each value is split in a stem and leaf plot into a stem, which is the first digit or, for, or digits, and a leaf, which is the last digit of each of the different data points. So here, if I've got the data points 7, 31, 152, each of these data points would look at a stem and leaf plot like this. So the stem is zero here. So zero is the first number. There's only one number here. So our leaf has to be the last number, seven. So our stem is going to be zero. So zero seven is just seven. Our uh, displaying 31 on our stem and leaf plot, our stem is our first value here, and our leaf is our last value, one, 31. And for this data value here, 152, our first value is 15, okay, 1, 5 for the, for the 150, and our 2 is our last value, and it becomes our leaf. So if we have a look at representing some data on a stem and leaf plot, all of this data here, it's going to be easy, easier to do it if it's nice and sorted, because what we do is we put our stems in increasing order, and have our leaves increasing outward as well um, as we add them in. So here, if we've got our stem um, and we've got our data and we sort our data, there are 12 data points here. So sort them from the lowest number, which is 10, to the highest number, which is 37. We can see what values need to go into our stem and leaf plot. So we can see that our first values here are ones, then we have twos, then we have threes. So there are our first values and we can put them as our stem for our stem and leaf plot. Then for each data point, we put down the leaf, which is the last digit of each one. So here, our last digit is zero, last digit is six. So that's 10 and 16 we've plotted on our uh, stem and leaf plot. Then we plot our three, five and seven for 23, 25 and 27. And then we continue um, doing that with our uh, 30 values, so 31, 33, 34, etc. So 1, 31, 33, 34, 34, 36, 36, 37. And what this shows is it shows easily how, where the majority of the data actually is, where the majority of each of the data points are. So we can see that that in the 30s there's a very large number of data sets. And because all of these are in order, just like in our dot plot, we can very easily find the median because it's going to be going to be the middle value or values for our data point. So if we wanted to find the median for our data set here, we could um, see that there are 12 values. So our middle values, if we go, we can count backwards if we want to see where the middle values are going to be. So our middle values are going to be 31 and 33. So I know that my median is going to be in between 31 and 33. Add those together, divide by 2, 31 plus 33 is 64. 64 divided by 2 is 32. So our median is going to sit right in the middle here. We can also try and see our mode here for the most commonly occurring. We can see that the value 34 and 36 both occur twice, so our mode where modes are 34 and 36 for this data set. So the reason that we use data sets is we can see patterns very, or data um, graphs and data representations is we can see very easily patterns in the data and it can allow us to find the mean and median um, and mode uh, and range a little bit easier sometimes.